Australia. A land of extremes. And the stories of those who discovered the secrets of the Australian continent and made this land great are worth telling. So join me as I recount and retrace the footsteps of Australia's greatest stories. On Australia Rediscovered with Rico. Victorian high country is one of the most scenic and spectacular regions in Australia. From the rugged snow-capped peaks, some of the highest in the country, to the lush river valleys, the high country's beauty has been a draw card for people seeking adventure or riches since the region was first discovered. Its history is one of hardship and danger, and for many, heartbreak. Explorers of all kinds have traversed the ranges and valleys, from those seeking fortune in the mountains and rivers, to the hardy cattlemen who managed to eke out a tough existence, grazing their herds on the high plains in the summer. And now, modern day four wheel drivers looking for a challenge. In this episode, I'll be travelling throughout the high country, seeking to discover some of the stories behind the high country gold rush of the mid to late 1800s. And our story starts right here, just outside the alpine town of Omeo. Throughout history, gold has been a symbol of both wealth and status. From the ancient Egyptians to the Spanish conquistadors searching for the fabled El Dorado, gold has fascinated people and cultures for thousands of years. A naturally occurring mineral, its beauty and its rarity has made gold one of the world's most sought after metals. As a result, those seeking fortune have been forever drawn to the lustrous metal, hoping for the chance to strike it rich. In the last few hundred years, nearly every continent has experienced a gold rush. The most notable being the US gold rushes of the early to mid 1800s and the gold rushes in Australia from the mid 1850s onwards. These gold rushes lured prospectors from all around the world seeking their fortune and as a result, the nation's cultures were changed forever. One of the largest ethnic groups to try their luck were the Chinese. After the discovery of gold near Orange in New South Wales by Edward Hargraves in 1851, Chinese miners began flooding into the country, and by 1861, more than 38,000 Chinese prospectors and their families had moved to Australia to find gold. And many of these Chinese prospectors found themselves in the Victorian high country, seeking their fortune. Located just two kilometres south of the Alpine town of Omeo, the area that I'm exploring is one of the region's most interesting historical sites. Well, this particular area as a whole is known as the Historic Oriental Claims. Uh, and it's not because it was mainly Oriental miners. It's the company that owned the majority it was actually called the Oriental Company. However, there were plenty of Asian miners here. The mine right behind us, this was known as the Starlight Mine, and it was owned by two Asian blokes, R. Sam and Lee Fook. And this also represents a really different style of mining to what you see throughout the rest of the area. This was all done with picks and shovels. And once they got in there under that clay, they found all of the alluvial gold that was concentrated up and they pulled plenty of it out. The Oriental claims were worked from 1856 to 1904. And it is estimated that over 1,500 kilos of gold was extracted from the area. While the Oriental company mined the area from 1876 onwards, it was the Chinese miners who began arriving from 1856 that made their mark on the claims. Unlike many of the other goldfields in Victoria, the Oriental claims were unique for their alluvial workings, achieving consistent gold production throughout its working history. The gold was extracted using several different methods, including both box and hydraulic sluicing. But these methods came at a cost. Take a look at this, this is prime evidence of what the miners did in order to be able to work their mines properly. They would make all these great big races all the way through here so they could channel the water. But the big impact it had here was on the natural waterways. It made real problems for the native wildlife and also the locals who rely on a freshwater source. 
Sluicing, a method that uses flowing water to separate the heavier gold from the lighter dirt and mud, required large amounts of water. The natural waterways were an obvious choice to sluice the diggings, but the runoff polluted the water, making the availability of fresh drinking water for the large number of miners a real issue. One that would have serious consequences for many of the Chinese miners in other parts of the gold fields, but not in the Oriental claims. I find it really interesting that the Chinese miners here in Amyo weren't hated anywhere near as much as they were just a few short k's up the road. And in fact, a lot of them went on to live long and prosperous lives after the mining had finished. And that's why you'll find them here in the Amyo Cemetery. Is your world changing? Your face. And in fact, they were such well-respected members of the community that their families and descendants, a lot of them still live here in Amio today.